Hey there, I'm Rye Myers, your Broadway and Entertainment BFF, and you're watching Live with Rye. I'm so thrilled you are joining me. Hey, listen, before we begin, I have a huge favor to ask of you. Do me a favor, head to, if you're watching on YouTube, subscribe to my YouTube channel below so you never miss an episode of Live with Rye. You see I'm going to go live anytime I post new content. Subscribe so you never miss uh, any episodes. It would mean so much. Also, I love being able to bring you some of the most exciting content, great interviews, and everything in between, but I can't do it without your help. So if you are so inclined, I'd love if you'd consider helping to support the platform and the show Live with Rye. Head to ridethenewsguy.com slash donate, or you can click this clever QR code. If you're watching on a laptop or a desktop of any sorts, you can scan the QR code, and that'll also take you to the donate page as well. Anything you're able to give would mean the world to me. Uh, I'm truly so grateful and humbled for all of your support. It means the world. And I look forward to continue to bring you, bringing you exciting content and interviews with so many exciting people in the entertainment and Broadway world. And with that, let help me welcome my very special guest. I am so excited to chat with her. She is so incredibly talented and such a lovely human. Please help me welcome the incredible Adrian Walker. Hi, Adrian. Hi, Rai. Thanks for having me on. Thank you so much for doing this. I'm so excited that you know you you uh, wanted to do this. I'm so happy to have you on. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Let's get into it. <laughs> Amazing. So, where did the inspiration come from to create 32 Bar Cut, including turning it into a video series? Well, you know what? I uh, was at my in-laws' house in Holt Summit, Missouri, and. Um, I had been there for a couple of months with my husband and um, I was sitting at their kitchen table and I was like, I have to do something. Like I didn't, when we got the call that we wouldn't be going back to uh, Broadway for a month, I thought, oh, I'll just take this as a break. And then it turned into two months and then three months and then six months. And so this was about at the, two, the three month mark where I decided that I wanted to do something. And so I was picking through my brain, trying to figure out what can I offer? What can I do? What, you know, um, you teach classes, what? And so I came across this, this idea of um, helping with auditions just uh, teaching people how to have a successful audition. I've had the pleasure and opportunity to be a reader for a couple of casting companies. And uh, in doing that, I've learned a lot about what helps people book a job and what keeps them from booking a job. So that's really how the idea came about. And I used the, the term or the phrase 32 bar cut because uh, when I was first starting out, usually my EPAs or equity principal audition calls would be, um, they would ask for a 32 bar cut of a song for me to sing. And so I always associated 32 bar cut with auditions, even though it really is like a jazz reference. But um, mm -hmm. so I looked online, I was like, hey, you know, is there a web domain for 32 bar cut? And it, it was available, so I bought it and I just sat on it for the rest of the summer. And then um, in September, I was like, okay, it's time to really do this. So I started a blog and I started a video series where I just talk to the camera and I talk about how you can have better auditions and what my career experience has been. And what I realized is that there, um, someone on my level, you know, kind of in the middle, you've done a couple of Broadway shows, but you're not like a star or, you know what I mean? There's no one really on my level that is giving and offering advice uh, so freely. And so I thought, okay, there's a, there's a void here that I can fill. And then uh, my husband joined me on it because he's a Broadway conductor and we both have something to offer to help people. And we've just created this community of 32 Bar Cut where we offer advice and we give our opinion on what our experience has been in this career. And then every week we get to sit down, kind of like you and I are sitting down now and we chat with a friend in the business about their experience. So we try to hit all facets and not just our opinion, but other folks' opinions as well. I love that. What a great idea and so clever to come up with. and. Uh, it's gone leaps and bounds, and I love that you've you've done that. Very exciting. What is Thank something? You. You're welcome. What is something <laughs> positive you've learned about the industry in your time interviewing fellow Broadway actors through Thirty Two Bar Cut that either that either surprised you or um, you didn't know? 
You know what I thought was pretty amazing when I sat down with other actors is that we all have very similar insecurities and stories to tell. And um, no matter the level that we all have had moments of feeling like we weren't enough or, you know, um, that we could have done better, that we can still do better. And what I've experienced so far in my career is that I have this uh, idea that, okay, what's next? What's next? I'm always thinking about what's next. And I found in sitting down with my colleagues that we all kind of have that common denominator and that um, the best thing that we can do is try to work through that and live in the moment. And I think this year off, this 2020 now into 2021 has uh, helped us all to appreciate living in the moment a little better. Everything's quiet. You have to deal with your thoughts. You have to deal with anything you push aside just to work, work, work. And um, it's just been, uh, it's been such a joy to sit down and talk with people and connect in that way because I did feel very disconnected from the theater community and, uh, it was really good to just check in with everyone and everyone has a, a different background. But I think what I've learned the most is that we are we have a lot more in common than I realized, no matter what, how far or leaps and bounds we've made in our career, we're really all kind of similar. For sure, yeah, for sure. And I mean, that's the beautiful thing about it is you get to, in a time that's so, you know, isolated for isolating all of us, you get to be able to talk and be able to still have that conversation, even though you're not in person, you know, you're still able to share that connection through the screen. And I think that that's so beautiful. That's sort of what I've been doing with my show is all being able to just connect with people and, you know, have that interaction. And it's, it's wonderful that you, um, you found that connection when you would talk to other performers that you all shared that same, you know, like what's next. And we all, I feel like, performers, but also non-performers find that same thing too, like what's next, rushing through life, sort of wanting to, you know, worried about what's to come and, you know, and uh, that, that, that it can get the best of you. Absolutely. Absolutely. How have you been during this time? I've been good. You know, it's been, it's been a whirlwind. It's been up and down, um, sort of, you know, like with you uh, in the beginning, I thought, okay, you know, this is going to be temporary and, and you know the summer the summer came and it was still going on and you know in the for the first four or five months i was just sort of trying to find my uh my place and uh you know was just you know wasn't doing the healthiest of stuff you know saying staying up real late you know waking up late and then i around september i thought you know what like i need to this is a perfect opportunity people are doing things they've wanted to do look at the opportunities ahead that you can do and i thought all right well let me at least use this time productively. And so then I was like, well, I've always wanted to do a talk show. I was like, let me create my own. You know, people are doing live streams. And um, I did that. And then it sort of snowballed from there. And uh, so many opportunities came. But, you know, I'm doing I'm doing well. And I'm much better now to know, know uh, now seeing that we have a Broadway reopening on the horizon. My performance is returning. And just being able to embrace and being knowing that I'm able to embrace people more in person, you know, that I'll be able to see somebody smile and be able to see my friends again. And and, and that's wonderful, but I'm, I'm doing well. And in a way, you know, like for a lot of people, while this pandemic has been so horrible, that's been a blessing in disguise because I've learned a lot. Um, I lost a lot, but I've also, um, there's been so many positive things, you know, I've created this, the show, this platform, which has led to many other opportunities. And, you know, we were discussing earlier about Broadway plus that led to, you know, uh, me being able to you know, be one of their lead hosts and, uh, and just all these other opportunities. And so it's, it's you know, uh, I've been good. And it's, there's been small blessings in this, but it's, um, I'm excited to put it behind behind me. Thank you so much for asking. I've, nobody's ever asked me that. I thank you. Oh yeah, I um I learned that from my friend Stephanie. I, when I first started interviewing people for the show, she uh, in turn started asking me questions. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> and I realized that really helps uh, it feel like a conversation. She taught me such a great lesson early on. So now whenever I do an interview, I just, if when, when someone's interviewing me, I mean, I always try to engage a little more. And so yeah, Stephanie Styles for the win. <laughs> Yes. Oh, she's, she's lovely. I've, I got, well, I saw her in Kiss Me Kate. I, you were in it as well. I saw you in it. And then I saw her in uh, the Newsies uh, on tour. So. Oh um, yeah. Stephanie is great. Oh man. She's yeah. such a good, a good person. And 
one of a kind. Definitely one of yeah. a kind. Well, what great advice because it's true, you know, and, and you your interviews are incredible. So I love that you're taking oh, on the you. interview hat. You're taking on the interview hat and interviewing people. I think that that's wonderful. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, you've created a subscription-based service for some of the content you do, including um, second part of some of your conversations are subscription-based. From a creative business standpoint and perspective, what have you learned about doing this? You know, this is something I've kind of um, struggled with because, you know, we we want to create and have our stuff monetize and, and you know, uh, makes money. But I'm always, but you always worry too, like, well, people want to buy. Who am I to sort of charge? Like, are they going to? So what has that process been like for you? And um, what have you learned about um, providing content um, at a paid price um, for people? You know what? I think that's such a great question because when in designing anything, there's always this risk and all this mystery of what's going to work and what won't work. And so when Austin and I were deciding about um, any type of payment, we were uh, on the fence. So at first we were just going to do a Patreon account. And then when we realized that Squarespace had uh, memberships, you could upgrade your website to a membership. We went ahead and upgraded it to a membership and then Austin proceeded to code and design the whole website. Like he's like a little mega genius over there. But um, so he designed the website and in doing all that work and really polishing it and, take, and, and both of us just taking responsibility of the platform, we felt like it was worth it to us to, to have some type of monetization level on it. And, um, and so we let all of our guests know that the second portion of the interview would be going on a subscription-based only part. And surprisingly, everyone was cool with that. And we were nervous about that, you know, asking people, hey, do you mind if we have an interview with you and then charge people to watch it? And um, But we try to keep the, the uh, show proper that we release on YouTube the big portion of the show because our main goal is for people to get something from the show. It's not for us to make money. And um, and so the curtain call, the second part of the show is as long as the guest really wants it to go. We it's Sometimes it's 20 minutes, sometimes it's another hour. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I, it was kind of scary to do that, you know? But I think with any business, you have to decide what your worth is. And, um, really great services in New York for women starting new businesses. And so I did a Google search and I reached out to one and uh, they mentored me uh, starting in uh, November. They, they mentored me from November to March and just kind of helped me with a business plan and, and um, even connected me with a lawyer uh, and just everything I needed to kind of understand my worth and put it in a platform from a business standpoint. I think as artists, we forget the business side a lot. We just want to share, share, create, create, but there's a business side to it that we have to add to protect ourselves and to, you know, add value to our product. Yes. You know, I so agree. And you saying that has inspired me sort of even more, um, you know, it, it, it's, it's a tough, process to decide but as you said you need to know your worth and your protect yourself your artistic integrity and so um i like that you that you've done that and, and it's it, that's been a process for me too that i've you know thought about like do you do patreon you know do you um subscribe i use um wix and uh and they have a you can like there's your certain articles you can uh do like a paywall and i'm like oh you know maybe like 99 cents or something um but you have to realize, as you said, what your worth is and know that, you know, when you're creating something, you know, it's OK to, um, you know, to, to ask for, for uh, you know, payment. You're doing this, you're creating your business, you're creating something and, um, you know, it, you want you want to be valued. And I think that's important. And I love that you got, you know, paired up and meant uh, the mentor uh, for that women's group that they hooked you up with all the right resources. I mean, that's just really like you can't you can't buy that. That's just wonderful. Yeah, I, I, I thought, I don't even know how it came across my mind for a second. I was like, wait, is there a service, is there someone that can help me? Like, how how do I wrap my mind around starting a business? And there are services in place for women, for uh, marginalized groups, for minority groups. If you want to start a business in New York, there are businesses that will help you. For anyone listening that's curious about that, there are services that can help you with that. 
Oh, well, that's just great to know. Thank you for sharing that. Yes, if you're interested, please, you know, I'll look that up because that's important for, for anyone, especially as you said, for marginalized communities too. That's wonderful that there's um, so much help out there. So we've learned last month that Broadway is officially coming back. And one of the first shows to be welcomed back is The Lion King on September 14th, where you will be returning to as the queen of Pride Rock, Nala. <laughs> Um, I've gotten to see you in it. You are incredible. I love the show, but I've seen you in it, and it's just uh, you're just wonderful. What are you most looking forward to uh, with the return? Thank you so much, Rye. Uh, I am most looking forward to appreciating it more. I think that I know that sounds crazy. Like, what do you mean you're not on Broadway? You didn't appreciate it. I think I was yeah. so overwhelmed by everything. You know, I, I moved to New York for this role. I hadn't gotten a chance to adjust to the city or anything. I got married three months after my debut and I just never stopped. And um, so now I'm ready to come back stronger uh, and more at peace with my inner self. And so I think I'm really in a place to appreciate it more and really live in it. And uh, so I'm really looking forward to that because to do the show stronger means less pain or maybe even no pain. And that means I'm gonna be happier and more excited and uh, a better coworker. So I'm just, I'm looking forward to that. Now, if I were doing an interview on ABC or something like that, and they wanted me to give the right answer, I would say that I'm really looking forward to telling the story again. Right. Uh, it's a beautiful story. And I'm, I'm, I, when I put my costume on, I'm probably gonna cry or something, but uh, I'm really looking forward to telling a story that I believe in and that I love. Well, I, I'm just so happy to hear that. And I mean, I, I totally know what you mean by when you say, you know, appreciate it more. I've heard that from a lot of people. I think everybody has a sense of a, this, uh, a sense of appreciation that they're going to bring to whatever they do. And, and it's okay to say that, you know, like you, you were not appreciated, but you now look back at it and you say, okay, you know, I can look at this as a different perspective and I appreciate what I have. I mean, for, even for me, I mean, I took a, a um, for granted being able to see shows all the time and, you know, being able to be in New York and, you know, uh, and now not having that for 16 months, as from a creative standpoint, being like, wow, and now appreciating every little thing, going to a show or going to get this experience. It's, you know, um, and I can't wait to, to see it and see you in it. It's a beautiful show. And yeah, for those who don't know, you don't know, you may be living under a rock, but that's okay. <laughs> September 14th is when Broadway is officially returning with Wicked, The Lion King and Hamilton's, or, or well, and Chicago, but Wicked and Hamilton and Lion King are partnering together and they're opening and they're doing a very exciting thing. They're um, opening sort of a half hour in between each other, separate curtain, uh, curtain calls at different times so the press can get there and cover each one, sort of what they did um, after 9-11 to have all the press cover it. So it's gonna be a special night. And as I said to you earlier, I have my ticket for Wicked that night and I'm just, uh, I don't think I, I will, even if I prepare myself, I don't think I'll be prepared. And I can't imagine what the performers on stage like you will feel. So It's going to be an exciting night. It, there, it will be like nothing else. The, the closest thing I can think of it might be like was when the Lion King hosted the 20th anniversary. That was uh -huh. really incredible. But this is just different because that felt very intimate. Like anyone that was a part of the Lion King family could feel how powerful that was. But now since we as a, as a whole world have experienced something together, I mm -hmm. think it's just gonna, it's gonna be, I don't know. I don't know. I'll let you know on September 15th <laughs> afterwards what it was like. But. Right, no, I, I agree. And throughout this, you know, it's funny. The, there is one, there's a song from the Lion King that stuck out to me that I've used sort of as inspiration for this time and endless night, you know, at the end they say, I know that the clouds must clear and that the sun will rise. I know that this night must end and the sun will rise. And I've said that to myself several times uh, over these last 16 months and it's not been easy, but it's crazy how, I mean, this, the song is beautiful and it's, you know, but how that song uh, really has just had a lasting impact on me because it is true, you know, the clouds will clear the sun will rise. Um, I'm probably getting it wrong. I know, but you get, you know what I'm, I, I oh, think, yeah. there is wrong, but, um, you know, I know that the clouds was clear and that the sun will rise. I know that the night must end. And it's, it's been a really powerful um, thing for me during this time. Yeah. It is 
actually my one of my favorite songs. It's hard to pick a favorite in The Lion King because I just love all the music. But um, Endless Night is so different from the other songs in the show, even though there's some votive floating here and there. But I think it's a beautiful song and it's, it's uh, such an intimate moment to have on stage. And so, um, yeah, it definitely speaks to what we've, we've been experiencing. And it's been a long night. It has felt like an yes. endless night. And it's, you know, like there's no end in sight. And um, so I think we're finally seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. And we'll just keep throwing in musical theater references as we go along. <laughs> the only way we survive this craziness is to throw musical theater <laughs> references and it makes everything better. What, is, what has been your favorite part of playing Nala um, in The Lion King? I think my favorite part about it is the personal growth. Um, I feel like she's such a strong character. She's so strong in her convictions and what she believes in, what she stands for. Um, and she doesn't waver from that. And, uh, you know, I would like to take that into my life and be very strong about my convictions. And um, I think in order to do that, you have to have integrity and, and maybe come from a place where not only do you know yourself, but you you know that your core, your center is um, good. You know, I feel like Nala's core and center are good and come from a good place. And so I, I love being able to uh, experience someone like that and strive to be someone like that. I love that. I, I totally agree. I think that that's great. I love it. So you, you've done a lot of Q and A mentoring group events and a Q and A over this pandemic, including some events with Broadway Plus, sort of as we mentioned earlier. What's it been like to be able to bring your story and career um, and lessons to people who may not have had the opportunity otherwise to um, hear it and experience it. I love that part of this whole experience. Honestly, uh, there are not, there are very, uh, quite a few things I did not love about the past few months, but I love because there's, there's been groups that have reached out to me in the past that wanted me to fly in or you know, um, I've even done like a Google Hangout or Google Meet. I, I get them all confused for um, my cousin's school. She's a principal at a school and every year I do a Q&A with them, but I've never been able to fly out or anything like that. And so for everyone to be doing that now is, is so amazing because students or, you know, um, just theater lovers all over who would never have gotten a chance to talk with one on one them their questions, they're now able to do that no matter where they are in the world. And so I think that that is uh, one, of the, one of the rewards that we've gotten from this experience. And for me, it's given me, I don't know, somehow, like I told you, I, I just feel more able to be myself that I don't really ever feel inclined to give the right answer. I feel like whatever answer is speaking to me in that moment is the right answer. And now I feel like in my life, I will take that with me, it, you know? And um, I think that's as helpful as we can be because if we are all just pretending like we're okay, then people who aren't okay will never feel the freedom or the bravery to say, hey, I'm not okay. And so I think it's really good when people who look like they're doing well say, hey, I'm not always okay. It just puts us all in the same field. And so, yeah, I feel very empowered to say I'm not okay, but also to tell the truth about my experiences. And I don't think that I would have felt encouraged to do so if we hadn't experienced this whole uh, Zoom and uh, virtual way of talking to each other. Yeah, I agree. Wow. I, I love that. You you are right. You, I love, love it. <laughs> Love it, love it. You're saying some great things. You always do. I just, I love, love the response. It's so powerful. Thank so, you. So you're welcome. I understand you've been working with Roundabout Theater Company on the new virtual reading of uh, Zora, Zora Neale Hurston's, I hope I pronounced the name right, mm -hmm. Spunk. Yeah. Um, could, could you tell me a little bit more about this? Oh, yeah. Okay. So Zora Neale Hurston 
uh, the author of Their Eyes Were Watching God, you know, like a uh, plurif, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm forgetting how to speak English, but she, she was a huge player in the Harlem Renaissance era, right? And so apparently everyone thought that they had all of her works and that nothing was lost. Well, in 1997, they found this work called Spunk, not to be confused with George C. Wolfe's Spunk, this is a different spunk and it was written by Zora Neale Hurston and it's set in a town that looks very similar to the town that she grew up in, I think in Northern Florida. And so um, spunk is about this, this, this lonesome guitar player who wanders into this town and just causes a whole ruckus. And so I play the character Ruby who falls for Spunk immediately, but she, he never really uh, answers her, her love calls. Um, he falls for Evelina instead. And so um, I, I say that Ruby is uh, desperate and forgotten. So that's the role that I played in that. And uh, I had a really great time. And what was so special about that experience for me, it was a virtual reading that Roundabout was doing um, full screen um, in uh, collaboration with Black Theater United to uplift Black voices and to bring works that have been forgotten or otherwise wouldn't get a chance to be produced to produce them um, on this like virtual platform. So what was amazing for me is that I got my start in theater in the Chicago theater community. I spent six years in Chicago working there, learning the everybody, and then I moved here to do The Lion King and I felt like I had to start all over with you know learning and growing and meeting people. Well, the director of Spunk was Lily Ann Brown and she is a director, a black female director in Chicago and so, she didn't hire a bunch of New York actors. She hired a bunch of Chicago actors. And so for a week, I got to sit down with all of my friends and do this reading and be desperate and forgotten. And it was just one of the highlights of last month for sure. Um, and so that was streaming, uh, I wanna say like three weeks ago, but it's all limited. But if you wanna see some of their other works that they're gonna be doing, just head over to roundabouttheater.org uh, and, and check out their link for streaming them. They're all free, but you're only able to stream them over a weekend as they release them. So just sign up, they'll email you, notify you, and you can stream all of these different plays that they're putting on over the summer. Well, that sounds very exciting. I'll have to definitely check it out. And I'm so glad you got to be a part of that. Really, it sounds like such an exciting piece. And I'm glad that uh, they, they found it. You know, I, I'm glad that we we're able to hear that story because it, that sounds really incredible. Yeah, yeah, it was, it, was, uh, it was so uplifting. It was just what I needed. Oh, oh I'm so happy to hear. Well, what do you hope to bring to your future roles when theater returns that you've learned over this last year and many months? I lost track of how many months it's been, but uh, what do you hope to bring to your future roles? I want to bring some more bravery, uh, especially in the rehearsal space. Uh, I think when I was first starting out, I was, I was, I was like, Hey, let's do this. Let's do this. Let's try this. And then as I got deeper into my career and moved up a level or another level, I just had fear in, in uh, being wrong or taking risks or being more creative and just waiting for the director to tell me, oh, his vision or her vision and what they wanted. And I don't wanna do that anymore. I wanna play. I wanna figure it out together. And if I'm wrong, okay, wrong choice, let's move on. But I just want to um, give myself more access to being brave about being creative in a public space. So I'm excited for the opportunity to do that. I'll, I hope you get the chance because that, that's wonderful, brave. That That is great. Love it. And I hope you get the chance to. I mean, that, that is such a strong, strong, strong thing to be. And, uh, you know, I'm glad you, you've come to that point where you've been able to because I, I would not be able to do that. I'm not a performer, but I wouldn't be able to be so, uh, you know, <laughs> I'd be all uptight and be so, like, worried about you doing it right. So that's that's great. Uh, oh, I'm uptight by nature. I am a naturally uptight person. Like I've been, I've been called uptight since I was eight. You know, like oh. so I get it. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> I'd be like, I don't, I don't like want to mess up. I don't, you know, it's a robotic. You know? <laughs> but, um, what, what do you hope theater will? Uh, what do you hope theater will um, bring when it returns um, from this hiatus? What do you hope um, it will bring? I hope a little more honesty. I, I want, I want to see. <sighs> I don't want to see the uh, corporate answers or the, you know, I'm afraid of the big bad social media crowd mob. I, I, I want to see honesty. And through honesty, we can actually have some real change when it comes to the grievances that have been presented uh, to the producers of Broadway. Uh, so yeah, I want to see a little more honesty and I want to see uh, people being willing to be vulnerable and, uh, see some change happen from the top. I think that that is so important. We need that. It's imperative. And there's been so many calls for that. And I, I'm, you know, it's happening a little bit. I hope it continues because it's much needed, as you said, really mm -hmm. so, so important. And, um, you know, you know, everything has for a reason. And I think Peter needed this, unfortunately. Um, didn't need this pandemic, but needed to go through the change that it has gone through. And, you know, I, I totally agree. And, um, you know, look, I'm looking forward to, to exactly what you said and so much more because it needs to happen. What do you hope people will take away from 32 Bar Cut when they experience? What's your hope for people? I hope that they're encouraged. That was really the, the heart of it is mm -hmm. that everyone's story is different. Uh, but if you have the passion in your heart to become a performer or to even just have a career in theater in any aspect, I hope that when you visit 32 Bar Cut or you watch an episode uh, and you laugh with us, uh, that that you leave feeling encouraged. Yeah, um, I think that a lot of times we touch on, we talk to our guests and Austin and I talk to each other about life lessons. They're not, they don't necessarily have to be theater related. So I just hope whenever someone comes by 32 Bar Cut um, for a moment, for an hour, for, a, a, you know, if you want to subscribe, but I, I hope that they leave encouraged and changed for the better. I, I think that's so important. And that's one of the things that I love about what you're doing with 32 Bar Cut is you're honest, you're being honest, you're having these unfiltered conversations, you know, you're allowing the artists their time and you are just, you're asking so many important questions, but you're also so inquisitive and you, um, you know, it, it's the honesty is what's really important and it, and it shows in the interviews you've done and what you do. And I, and you have to bring honesty to all you do. And, you know, you can really see that in, in it. And I think that that's what's really made it so special for people. Wow. Thank you so much. Thank you. That means a lot. You're welcome. Well, it is very, very true, really. And I can just, you know, I love listening to to your interviews on there. I just, you're so full of passion and inspiration and honesty. And, and it's, it's. Uh, I know it's not always easy. I mean, it's not always easy to, you know, put yourself out there. So I really just, you know, my virtual, my pretend hat goes off to you, you know. So. Well, I know you know, because you're, you've are you been doing these interviews every Tuesday. It is not, it's, it's, it can be challenging to, to, you know, you research everyone and then you talk to them and you want, you want to make sure the conversation goes well. And it's, it's, a, it's a lot of responsibility. Yeah, it is. And, 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 you know, reaching out and getting people and, you know, uh, talking with people and, you know, making sure technology works and dealing yeah. with those quirks and everything, yes, everything in between, and and and, and you know, hoping I'll have a lot to say and it'll be good. And uh, yeah, it's it, it is it is a lot, but um, you know, so you're totally totally right about that. Well, what advice do you have for aspiring young performers as they start their professional career, especially coming out of um, this last 14 months where things have looked so differently and they're entering into an industry that will be much different than it was when they. Um, that it was, you know, 16 months ago when they were still in their training. Yeah, I, um, if I were in that position, I would want to tell my younger self uh, that even though we just came out of this pandemic or we're still trying to recover from it, that um, your career could possibly look 
on and off just like this time period has been. So that's something to take into account. One is that there are dry spells in this career. But if your cornerstone is that you have a passion for this and you wanna do it, then you just have to listen to that voice and not give up. And what I'm experiencing now, because I really want a, 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 some type of future in TV and film is that the closer I get, it feels like the further I get. Like I'm getting more and more auditions, but, and I'm, I'm, I'm getting director sessions and I'm thinking, this is it. And then they go another way. This is it. And then they go another way. And it, that, that is this career and it may, it can wear you down and it can make you feel like you're, you know, you have no business doing this and what are you doing? And um, you can't let those voices take control. I, I had a, I have a really great coach, acting coach, her name is Heidi Marshall. And I told her about this uh, big audition I had and that I, I almost booked it and then I didn't and that I was still having trouble getting over that. And so she said, hey, I wanna talk to you, let's let's talk. So we talked, we got on the phone and she reminded me that there are voices, right? And there are voices telling you that you're not good enough, that you're never gonna make it or whatever. But there are so many other voices saying the, those opposite things, that you are good enough. Look at how far you've gotten. Look how talented you are. Look how amazing you are. And she's like, you have to choose the voices that you're going to listen to. Listen to the right voices. Don't listen to the other voices. And when you listen to the positive voices, you create a narrative that is positive. When you listen to the negative voices, you create a, ne a, uh, <laughs> a narrative that is negative. And that completely changed my outlook. It's exactly what I needed to hear. And so I would just say to, to aspiring musical theater actors, to already working musical theater actors or theater actors or whatever you have that, you, that you're planning on doing with your life, listen to the positive voices and, um, and stay the course because it's worth it. And, and like I've heard, I've heard this before, I'm sure you've heard it too, that uh, the only difference between you and, I don't know, a million other people, the pe person that made it and the person that didn't is that the person that made it just didn't give up. And that's what this business is like. It's, you just don't give up and, and it'll, things will turn your way. You are, are so right about that. And it's so hard to remember at times, you know, especially when we're in the trenches yeah. to not give up, but yeah, you know, it, don't give up. That's exactly, that is so, so true. And tell those negative voices. And I always like to remember the piece of paper that I had hanging up that my high school counselor gave me, tell those negative voices inside your head to shit, to sit down and shut up. Yes. Know? Yes. Easier said than done, but you know, um, it, it, it is, it is so true and to never give up. I agree. Uh, what have you learned about yourself as an actress during these last 16 months, 18 months, who knows how long it's been this point. Um, and how has it made you stronger? What I've learned is, and what's been really helpful is that I've had a lot of TV and film auditions. And so I'm still getting a chance to like work that muscle. And what I've learned in them is that there's no like, uh, uh, there's no puzzle, there's no um, like, I'm, I'm losing my words, but there's like no quick way to, mm, there's no like play by play. Here's how you break down a scene and this is what you do. It, for me, it's more about listening, finding the humanity in the character and just bringing that forward. And uh, that's just what I've been trying to do every time I, I get a chance to do it. And also making peace with just the audition being the end point. You know what I mean? Like just enjoy the audition, do the work of the audition and leave it alone. Do the audition, leave it alone, throw the sides away, you know? Right. So that, that just try to be, uh, bring my humanity to it and be to it. That's all you can do. And that is, that is all you can do. Um, so, so important. Thank you for sharing that. Well, if you want to keep up with me, for those of you watching, you can head to uh, Rye underscore Myers on Instagram and Twitter. I'm also on Facebook at official Rye Myers on Facebook. Um, 
Adrian, before we go, why don't you tell us where can we follow you, keep up with you, what are your websites, um, all that good stuff. Awesome. Well, I am on Instagram at a song is in my heart. Uh, and if you want to check out 32 bar cut, you can go to at 32 bar cut. We're on Instagram there. And if you want to check out our website, it's easy. It's just 32 bar cut.com. And, uh, if you want to check out my website, really it's more so for hiring purposes, but if you just want to see what I do, um, you can check me out at Adrian M Um, yeah, that's it. Amazing. Well, that is wonderful. Well, Adrian, I am so excited for uh, the future of theater. I'm so excited to see you return to The Lion King and all the other projects you have coming your way, because I know you are going to have so much success in not only theater, but in TV film. I can I can see it. I can thank feel you, it. Right. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, and thank you for taking the time to chat with me, really. And it was so great to uh, talk with you more and hear more of your story. And uh you know, you are just an incredible human and um, thank you for doing this. It has been my pleasure. It was so great to sit down and chat with you, Rye. I love your show. Thank you for having me thank on you. and congratulations on on doing something new and, and just, you know, diving in, being brave. Thank you. Thank you so much, Adrienne.